kicked nine goals in the first game. Everybody thought that was pretty smart. I didn't think oh, I was that great, but I managed to uh, more or less keep it going. And uh, in the first year, I think uh, I was the first one to kick 100 uh, goals in a season. And uh, that started a run of nine years consecutively of getting over 100. And that really was uh, a record that I, I did cherish. It was something really good. I didn't get uh, a lot of recognition at the time because uh, it was more or less something that came week by week and I didn't realise that I was going to keep kicking goals for nine years, but that's how it happened. Now, as far as full forwards go, you're not the biggest bloke in the world and you're certainly not the heaviest. No. How, how, how did you go kicking all those goals? Well, I, I got knocked around a little bit, but I was able, I was fast, and uh, I was only uh, uh, five foot nine, I think I was, and I weighed just over 10 stone when I started. But I gradually built up by, uh, in a couple of years, I built up to about 11 stone. And I stayed more or less at that uh, weight for the rest of my career. So was it your speed and your marking or your intimidation on those well, other full backs? Well, it was everything. I think the main thing was that I could read the game. I could kick left and right foot, I suppose, would be the best advantage. I could kick just as far with left foot as I could with right. And I, all my goals, snap goals, were kicked with a left foot. I didn't rely on the uh, uh, left foot to kick straight goals. I kicked my right foot, but all my snap goals were kicked with my left foot. So that was your little trick that the that other fullbacks didn't. Nobody didn't know knew which way I was going, and I could turn either way, and I uh, predominantly kicked with the left foot. So how do you think you'd probably go these days playing full forward against, you know, Mick Martin? Well, I think I'd be all right because I had the speed. Uh, and the anticipation, I think, was one of the main things. I could read the game. I could anticipate was what was going to happen uh, a little bit ahead of everybody else, I should say. Now, you kicked 152 goals in 1934. That's a lot of goals. Did you bring your own football, or what was going on? <laughs> no, I, uh, well, I had a good year. The first year I played, I was getting over 100, and... Uh, I was young at the time and more or less inexperienced, but I built it up in that first year that I could more or less play. Well, it wouldn't matter who they put on me, it didn't make any difference, I could still kick goals. I took a little bit of a hammering from time to time, but I was able to cope. And uh, I had an arrangement with uh, uh, Bert Butcher, who played full forward, that if I was getting knocked around a bit, he'd take my position for 10 minutes and I, then I'd go back again. But the strange thing about it, I, I never approached the coach on any move I made or we made. I did it all off my own bat. And uh, if you did it today, they'd take you off the ground, I should say. You must have had some good midfielders back then that delivered the ball very well to you to Whenever give you those opportunities. I each year, I was able to manage with half forwards and rovers. I seemed to be able to, uh, with cope any difficulty, I, I studied the fundamentals of their play and went along with that. I knew if they kicked a certain way with a, a wavering to the left or right, well, I played according to that. Sounds like, George, you're a little bit before your time. You obviously had very good skills, left and right foot, which that, that didn't come into the game probably to a little bit later, and you're talking about thinking quicker and smarter than everybody. Sounds like you were definitely before your time. Yes, well, I try to influence all the young players now, not that I've got that much influence, but all uh, my association with juniors, I always gave them the uh, idea that kicking left foot as well as right would get them out of trouble. And I'd know even today when I, I can't see a lot of football because I'm legally blind, but I see them running and they can't kick the ball left foot. They get into trouble and they can't, they've can't. they got to try and punch it to get out of trouble instead of swinging around and kicking it with their left foot. When I uh, gave away playing, I couldn't watch some of the nasty things that went on. I used to get a bit wrapped up and I thought well, it would be better if I stay away. 
So I didn't watch a lot of league football after I uh, stopped playing. Last year you were inducted into the AFL Hall of Fame. You actually went to Melbourne to receive your award. Yes, I went to the Melbourne. My, uh, I was legally blind and my wife had the invitation as well. She was uh, uh, suffering with bad knees. So my family decided they'd all come too. So my two sons brought their wives and the six of us went and got a table right at the front of the stage. It was really something nice. George, if you were playing football out there today and you were the full forward, how do you think you'd go? I think I'd go all right. I'd have to learn to, uh, the players that were playing in front of me, but I'd catch on pretty well because I could read the game. I could lead out well. And as I say, my favourite kick both feet got me out of a lot of trouble. George, with an impressive record like you have, I really believe that you'd probably get out there and still kick your five or six a game. Well, I'd hope so. I'd be disappointed if I couldn't. When I see the efforts of some of them, I think, well, I could do better than that. Some of them make some awful mistakes just through inexperience. But I think I'd be able to cope. I think I would have been able to cope.